We're in Word 2019, Jasper Active Lesson 8, using footnotes or endnotes. This activity is three steps, but it shouldn't take too terribly long. So with the Tolano Employee Handbook Captions document open, we're going to um, find Heidi Anderson uh, on page three. Now, I could scroll through and find it, or I can use my Control F function and search Heidi Anderson. There she is. Let me verify I'm on page three. I am. So I'm going to put my cursor at the very end of the words Heidi Anderson. I'm going to go up to the References tab, and in the Footnotes group, I'm going to click Insert Footnote. So a footnote will show up at the bottom of the page where the reference is, so in this case, Heidi Anderson. And footnotes can be used to add in some additional information that doesn't necessarily uh, mess up how your formatting looks here. So I'm going to insert a footnote. You're going to see at the bottom, it gives me a little number one, and it, my cursor is hanging out here, ready for me to type something. So I'm going to type in, Heidi joined Ian's group in November 2012 after completing her degree in geophysics. Now that's a lot. I can also click and drag, use the copy selected text button, click into my document, right click it, and then select paste to put that text right in here. All right, next we're going to go to page five and click at the end of the word Seattle. So I'm going to use my navigation pane again, type in Seattle. There we go. It's jumping me down. I only have one result verifying that it's on page five. It is. So I'm going to put my cursor at the end of the word Seattle, go up to my references tab to the footnotes group and click insert footnote. Now this time you're going to notice I have a number two, right? This will be my second footnote. And I'm going to click and drag over the text included in the instruction panel. So this office was leased as of December 2012 with Office 365 as a pilot for office resources. I'm going to copy this text. I'm going to click into the footnote there, right click, and select the paste option. And there's my text right there. So I can mark step one as complete. For step two, we're going to insert an end note. So an end note, when we put that in, it's actually going to show up at the end of the document. So this is good information that isn't necessarily something um, you immediately need to know. right? We can put it at the end of the document as a reference. So we're going to go to page seven. So this time I'm just going to scroll down to page seven, and I'm going to find vacation days. I'm going to put my cursor at the very end of the word vacation days, go up to the references tab, to the footnotes group, but this time I'm going to click insert end note. So the end note is going to show up at the end. I can see I have my list of figures and tables here. It's going to show up after that. I'm going to click and drag over the text in the instruction panel, copy, click into my document at the right spot where that end note is, right click, and paste. Now one thing I want you to notice, first of all, let me go ahead and close out of my navigation pane. With our endnote, you're going to see that the text goes all the way across the page, whereas if I scroll back up to where I have a footnote, you'll see it only goes halfway across the page. The reason behind this is that on this page, I have my text set up as two columns, so my footnotes are following that formatting. On this last page, when the end note is, it's only set up in one column, so it goes all the way across the page. I'm going to mark this as answered and go to step three. So we're going to go back to page five, find that footnote. There we are, page five. All right, I'm going to, in the footnotes group, so references tab, footnotes. I'm going to click the dialog box launcher. So that's the little guy that lives in the lower right. I'm going to click that open and I'm going to have a dialog box show up. I'm going to look for the columns area where it says footnote layout. Right now it says match selection layout, but I'm going to click the drop down and instead select one column 
and then click apply. Now what you're going to notice, let me scroll back up, huh, is that nothing changed. The reason is I didn't click into my footnote. So let's do that now. Click into the footnote, click that dialog box launcher, go to footnote layout columns. Instead of match section layout, I'm clicking one column, clicking apply. Now you will see that this is set up as one column text. I'm going to do the same thing for the footnote on page three. So I'm going to click into it first, go up to the footnotes dialog box launcher, find the columns section, match section layout, change that to one column, and then click apply. Same thing. There we go. So now I have one column layout selected for all of my footnotes and my end note. Okay. I'm going to go back down to the end note, so all the way at the end of the document. There we go. And I'm going to click into it. And then in that footnotes group, I'm going to click the footnote and end note dialog box launcher. And this time I'm going to change the format, the number format that we have. So under the format section where it says number format, I'm going to click this drop down and change it from the I, 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 I option to one, two, three, and click apply. And you'll notice that that little symbol right there changes from an I to a one. That's all I've got to do for this one. So I'm gonna mark as answered and click submit.